I was recently asked if I could build an entire set of bedroom furniture in one weekend. So, let's find out. These are the power tools I'm going to use. They're all battery powered and reasonably affordable. This video is going to focus on the shelves and the mirror. They are the simplest and easiest projects to build out of this set. I already posted the build video of this bed, and there's a link to that in the description. The same goes for this bent plywood desk. I didn't make the chair, or the lamps, or the fake plant, but this challenge was fun, and maybe we'll try all of that next time. I built all of these projects on the floor of the semi-exact factory in Minden, Nevada. It's a really cool company, and they provided all the steel components that I used. The wood parts of these projects all consist of plywood and 2x lumber. For the plywood, I start by clamping down a straight edge with a couple of $1 spring clamps. This serves as a guide that ensures my circular saw makes nice straight cuts. I want the shelves to be about 12 inches deep so that they could accommodate folded clothing or books. And so I started with a series of long rip cuts to produce eight foot long strips of plywood that I then cut to length using a speed square and my circular saw. Joinery can be the hard part of woodworking, so we're gonna make it easy. I cut pieces of two by four the same length as the shelves. These are gonna give me nice sturdy supports that are easy to screw the plywood to. I sanded all the pieces to 150 grit using my orbital sander. At the end of this video, I'll talk about how to customize these projects, tailor the dimensions to your specific needs, and ways to potentially make them less expensive. Once all my shelf boards were cut and sanded, I used two inch long finish screws to screw them to two by fours. Not only does this give me a thicker piece of wood to screw the sides to, it also lets them stand upright, which makes it easier when there's just one of you. I drove two inch long finish screws through the side panels and into both the two by fours and to the edges of the plywood. If you're a beginner, I recommend pre-drilling the holes before screwing into the edges of the plywood. It'll just help ensure that the plywood doesn't split. Lining things up to pencil marks can be a little bit tricky, and afterwards you have to erase those marks. So I like cutting some scrap pieces of 2x4 to the right lengths and just using those as hard stops. I'm going to use 4 inch hairpin legs to raise this set of shelves off the ground a little bit, which makes it easier to sweep underneath. But you could just have it sit on the ground, or you could just use a couple pieces of 2x4s as legs. The heads of finished screws are quite small, but if you want to go the extra mile, you can cover them up with some wood putty. Once the putty dries, just do a light sanding to get it nice and flush with the surface of the plywood. I wanted to create a sturdy backer panel for the mirror, but I don't need all the weight and expense of three quarter inch thick plywood, so for this, I just went with half inch. Mirrors are normally the last stop before you enter out into the world, so I thought a few small shelves on the side of it would be handy for things like keys, wallets, watches, and accessories like that. And I just cut and sanded some strips of three quarter inch thick plywood that were left over from the other projects. I screwed these pieces together to make sort of an L shape that'll be easy to attach to the half inch plywood backer. I placed the mirror but didn't attach it yet. I just used it to help figure out where I wanted the shelves to go. I wiped off all of the dust and then finished the pieces with Maker Brand Simple Finish. It's a low VOC plant-based finish that wears really well. It also brings out the color of the birch veneers. It's really easy to apply. You just wipe it on heavy with a rag, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then rub out the excess. I then used the hardware that came with the mirror to attach it to the plywood. I had some leftover scraps of plywood, so I just used some semi-exact shelf brackets and made a shelf that will go over the desk. So before we go over design options, project planning, and affordability, let's hear a word from the sponsor for this video, Policy Genius. This video is sponsored by Policy Genius. Most homeowners who have a mortgage are required by their lender to buy homeowners insurance. Home insurance costs can vary depending on the provider, so it's really important to compare costs. I've learned that comparative shopping your policies can lead to a surprising amount of annual savings. Policy Genius makes this all really easy. You just go online and you answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property, and then Policy Genius can compare your existing policy against others in the market to make sure you're getting the right coverage at the best possible price.
Life is unpredictable and insurance lets me have peace of mind, which reduces my anxiety and lets me be more productive. I tend to procrastinate when it comes to paperwork, so I really appreciated that this whole interface made it really easy to get insured. Oh, and Policy Genius has saved their home and auto insurance customers an average of $1,000 per year. And if the Policy Genius experts find a better rate, they'll switch you over for free. If you own a car too, Policy Genius can mix and match different coverages just to find that great combination that's gonna give you the most value. What was important to me is that Policy Genius never sells your information to other companies and they don't add on extra fees. So visit policygenius.com slash homemade modern to shop the market and start saving today. Or just click the link in the description below. All right, back to the project. So I really like this idea of building out entire bedroom set of furniture in one weekend and we really did pull it off. It was a little bit tight on the timing, but uh, in the end it all got done. I did want to go over some different design options that might fit different aesthetic tastes or even different budgets. Now the fur 2x4s I got, they matched the color of the birch veneer plywood pretty well, but if that's not always the case. So you could paint the 2x4s, and I've done it a few different ways. I painted them in accent color, so I have a little bit of contrast. In this particular type of plywood with the birch, I probably would have gone with like a, a bright yellow, I think would be nice. Another technique that I've done is paint them with the same wall paint as the wall that they're going up against. So they just kind of become invisible. So you get that kind of stability and support of the two by four, but when you actually look at the shelves, it those supports just kind of blend in and you just have these really clean edge plywood lines. Now I get a lot of questions about cost. People always ask, how much does it cost to build this project? I used to answer those questions years ago, but I stopped and here's why. Prices change a lot. Just in the last nine months, uh, you know, lumber prices have gone up two to three times in some places. That's because not just of COVID messing with supply chains and shutting down certain lumber mills, but also we had a lot of fires on the West Coast too, which burned up a few lumber yards that I had, at least that I'm aware of. Another reason is that these videos tend to stay up for a pretty long time. When I used to post the prices, I'd get comments two or three years later about people complaining, well, that's not what plywood or, or lumber costs where I'm from. So I try to just show what I use and then you can price it locally. And locally is really important because Prices vary region to region. Even the same brand of stores in different cities often have different prices. Now, I can tell you some ways to reduce costs more on the conceptual part of the design. So I love these semi-exact steel products. They're fantastic, they're made in America. They'll pretty much last a lifetime as long as you don't take them outside, scrape off the paint and let them rust out. Super heavy duty, really well made, but they're not cheap. So for some people, you might have more short-term budget constraints and you wanna go with something that may not last as long or be quite as sturdy, but it's what you can afford at that moment. And I've done a whole bunch of projects that show alternatives to the steel products I used in this video. So for example, I've done beds with plywood legs. I've done platform beds where I use two by eights or two by tens as the supports. And I've done plywood tables and desks that either use two by fours for the legs or just use additional pieces of plywood to make some really cool looking designs. But for some people, I know time is money and that's why I think the steel prefab components are really good because they certainly make DIY projects a little faster and a lot easier. I also like this idea that you'll have some parts of the furniture that'll last forever and other organic parts like the wood parts that can wear down over time. They're gonna get scuffed up and you can either take them off, refinish it separately. You don't have to refinish the whole table, just unscrew the legs sand down the top, apply a new finish. It gives you a lot of flexibility if you move homes and you have a different uh, decor scheme that you wanna make everything blend into. So the legs can be repainted, the wood parts can be sanded down, you can add a colored stain, done a lot of those before. And if you think of that way, investing in heavy duty steel components could make sense financially over the long run. Now, if you just want to reduce the cost of the plywood, sanded pine plywood tends to be a little bit cheaper than furniture grade birch veneer. It also might have a little more warp to it, so that's something to consider. But I wouldn't go so far as going to MDF, OSB, or one of the particle boards. I feel the longevity of plywood is well worth the slight incremental cost increase. Now, I was designing these projects 
right on the spot as I was building them. So I definitely could have been more materially efficient if I had planned them all together. And this is something I really recommend, particularly if you're on a budget or you just don't have a lot of room to store materials. So I used five sheets of three quarter inch plywood for all these projects, one sheet of half inch and one sheet of quarter inch, and then a handful of two by eights and two by fours. Most of those two by fours and two by eights I used in the projects, but I always get a couple extra ones just so I can use them to, to prop the plywood off the ground so I have a nice cutting surface so I don't hit my, my blade on the concrete floor. We had some scrap left over. We didn't use every last piece of it. It'll get reused at the semi-exact factory. But if I had more time, I probably would have done maybe like a laundry basket using some leftover two by fours and cut thin strips of plywood. I think that would be really cool to have that right next to a set of shelves that could be used for clothes. So your laundry hamper will actually match where the clean clothes are stored. I just think that'd be like a nice little touch. I also suggest starting with the big and most complicated pieces. And so for this room, that would be the bed. Now, you don't have to make those kind of side tables on either side, and that certainly would make it more material efficient because you wouldn't have to do those jigsaw cuts. And it would also reduce the amount of tools that you need. That's really the only project where I needed the jigsaw. So if that's outside of your budget and you just want to go circular saw, orbital sander, drill and driver, you can get away with it with just those four tools. From a sequence standpoint, I would start with the bed, cut the big pieces, glue them up, then start with the desk, cut those, get them bent into, into shape, and then start gluing them. And then while the glue's drying for those, that's when I would knock out the easy projects, like cutting the pieces for the shelves and for the mirror. Now, as for the tools themselves, uh, you could get away with doing a whole bedroom set, not quite like this, but with just three tools, drill, orbital sander, and circular saw. I like using a impact driver with a drill. It just lets me kind of uh, dual wield and I can pre-drill holes and then drive the screws without changing over bits. So it's really more of a time saver than something that you absolutely need to get everything done. So again, if the budget constraints are there, probably get just those three tools and you definitely can build a full bedroom worth of furniture with them. I do like having the jigsaw in the mix though. I just think that if everything is done with just those three tools, it's going to probably end up being all the same kind of geometry, which means even though the furniture matches, it might look a little too monolithic and just all the same. So even though all the wood matches and the metal matches, which I really like, I like that there's some variances in the types of shapes and geometry that you see. We're seeing the kind of offset curves on the sides of the bed. We're seeing the angle of the headboard and how that's different from the rectilinear shelves of the, of the shelving. And I think the little garnish on the top is the bent plywood. So we get a consistent material palette that's really clean, but we have a little bit of variation in terms of shapes. So don't forget to check out the bed and desk videos. They'll be in the description below. And thanks for watching. I know this is a little bit different kind of format and uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below, but be nice. All right, bye.